All right, so this is Stutter Edit 2 from Isotope, a multi-effects plugin that makes it easy to do things that would normally take hours to do in your DAW, cutting up audio, you know, adding in a bunch of different effects, a bunch of different automation or modulation curves, where you can do all of that very easily here in Stutter Edit 2. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so here is Stutter Edit 2. We are in Studio One, but this, of course, will work in Pro Tools, Cubase, whatever DAW you have. So the first thing we need to check out is the play mode. So right now it's an auto play mode, which you can see up here. And that means whenever I start to play back, we immediately get that effect. We can of course change things up, switch through things however you want. Now auto mode can be useful whenever maybe you're building an effect and trying to customize it. So auto can be great for that. It can also be very useful if you just have like a little section of audio that you want to affect. And of course you can automate that on and off, or of course just cut the audio and put it on a different track and you know have stutter edit on that uh, second track. But to really get the most use out of stutter edit, you're going to want to set it up to be triggered from your MIDI keyboard. We can do that up here. Just click this button right here. And the cool thing about stutter edit too, is it tells you how to set up the MIDI mode in whatever DAW that you're in. So we are in Studio One. It tells me the instructions right here. Let's just go through them real quick. Super simple, pretty much the same for uh, any DAW out there. So here in Studio One, I'm just gonna press T. That's gonna give me my add tracks. And I want an instrument track, or maybe you're in Pro Tools, you want a MIDI track. Super simple, that's it. Go and add that. Let me change the color real quick so I know what it is. Then just down here, make sure, by the way, you can do this from that dialog window if you wanted to. But down here, we can, Go ahead and set this to my complete control keyboard and just make sure that I'm sending this to the proper instrument. So in this case, it's stutter edit two, number six, as we can tell up here, because I have several instances of stutter edit in this, uh, in this session. So now whenever I press the key on my MIDI keyboard, I'm going to switch my different uh, effects that I have set up here so I can play back. You notice you don't hear any of these effects because I have not, you know, played anything. All right, so it's really just that easy to uh, use the MIDI mode. And that's what we did here on the opening. We just, uh, in this case, we drew in our, uh, our MIDI because uh, that's how I preferred to do it. But you can also, of course, record that in, play it in, and uh, have that remember your performance. So it's almost like you're performing, you know, with, uh, with the effect. Now up here across the top, we have a bunch of different factory banks that are included. You can see what you have currently loaded up over on this side here. You can also trigger them. So even if I'm playing back, I can just click directly within here to uh, trigger things as well and sort of hear exactly what I have. So maybe go to a master bus. If I want to load all of these, I can just double click this name. It's going to load all of those up for me real quick. And you can see how they're mapped out across the uh, keyboard there. It updates over here in this window. So I know exactly what MIDI key I am uh, pressing. But if you have something in a different bank, for example, so a completely different bank here, that I want uh, included over here. And just open it up, maybe find this one here and just drag it right over, drop it, and then I have it right there. You can also press these three dots and I can load it from a file if I happen to have a uh, file that I want to load. So that's how you would uh, load up your different uh, gestures right here. You can also do it, by the way, right here as well. You can see here's empty gestures that I have here. I can select an empty gesture, for example, and then set up whatever, you know, whatever I want. Make sure I trigger the proper note. Let's put this on C1. I'm just pressing the key on my keyboard. Select C1, turn on stutter, playback. Hold down the key, so on and so forth. Now up here, we have a bunch of different uh, controls. I'm not gonna go over them in depth because a cool thing about a lot of the Isotope plugins is if you simply hover over a control, it tells you what it does. So that really saves a lot of time of having to try to learn what everything does because it tells you exactly what everything does uh, right here. So our on grid and the grid right here, palindrome, which is gonna be like a loop. You can freeze the duration and change that stuff however you want. Again, just hover over a control. It will tell you exactly what it is. Within stutter edit, we have a lot of things, stutter, buffer effects, uh, distort, lo-fi chorus, comb, reverb, flanger, phaser, low pass, even a tape stop effect built right in here, high pass and uh, delay. We can change the combination or we can change the way these are, are structured just by dragging these uh, three lines, the hamburger, if you want to call it, 
and just put it wherever you want in the chain, which makes it really easy uh, to set things up exactly how you want them. So something like a simple tape stop, I can just make sure, let me find, here's an empty uh, gesture. I'll just turn on just tape stop for that, playback. That's all there is to it, hold down you know, that, that MIDI key. If I turn palindrome off, let's check that out real quick. So yeah, if I keep holding it down, it restarts over. If I turn the palindrome on, it's gonna go back. Then I release the key there in this uh, in this case. So if you wanna do a tape stop effect really easily in any DAW, Stutter Edit 2 has you covered. And of course, each of these effects have you know, an unlimited amount of customization. So just for example, you know, we go to distortion here. Uh, one band distortion, two band distortion, change the tone. You'll also see the time variable modulation, which is sort of like an envelope and an LFO together over here. And that's for each and every parameter. So you can really set things up exactly how you want. We can always click this button here to head back to our curves and get a better look. Double click, can add more nodes here. If I want to structure things exactly how I want, I can load curves, you know, pre-programmed curves very easily, just like that, reverse the curve. A lot of stuff in here that's pretty self-explanatory, right? The speed right here, resolution, so on and so forth. So we'll go back here. And again, this is for every control. So even over here on lo-fi, look at all of these different envelopes that I can modify exactly how, you know, exactly how I want. So we're here on this D1 key, if I play back. That's our lo-fi effect. If I head in here, maybe put in a different curve real quick. Check that one out. So that's just a quick look at how you can modify things exactly how you want for, through all of these uh, all of these different effects. Chorus, maybe put some reverb on that. Turn on, just say maybe the stutter. Super easy to set that up however you want. Of course, change the rate of that, head down into your Stutter rate, change things up however you want. Another thing you have is a global filter right there as well. Which is what we used up here, by the way. We play that back. Give a cool sweep effect uh, right there just by using stutter edit. And in this case, just by using the, uh, you know, the mod wheel. So let's head down here and check out maybe some other things that you might want to do with uh, Stutter Edit 2 since we've already gone over basically how to use it. It's pretty easy to figure out if you just spend you know a little bit of time with it. And here we have just uh, FM8 on a uh, on the track here. Pretty pretty boring. It's just a static you know sort of almost like a pad sound. But what if I want that sort of side chained sound that you get whenever you feed a kick drum into a compressor to get uh, you know, that side chain sort of pumping sound? Well, we've already done that here with stutter edit. No need to side chain anything in. So I'll just bring that uh, in. We already have the note drawn in down there. Let's play that back and you'll see what I mean. So there's that side chain sound just by choosing uh, BT side chain simple preset right there. Let's check this one out real quick. Of course, head in there, start cutting away if you want, or bada bang, man, man, grab Stutter Edit 2, Electric Boogaloo. Did above Just wanna be like of course, I can head in here. I can change up my stutter rate. I can change things up. So let's go, let's uh, do that uh, right here. Let's hear it one more time. Let's change it up real quick. Maybe change it here. Of course, I can head in here to you know a preset that I already have set up, and I can add more things to it. Maybe I want to phaser on that as well. Something like that could take, you know, several minutes to actually put together and chop the audio. 
set up your phaser effect, your high pass effect, uh, your chorus effect, and then add the uh, modulation that you need for something that, that it's simple here because we have stutter edit two, but you know, in the real world without stutter edit two, something like this could take, you know, a good 10 minutes to actually uh, put together. Then down here we have another sort of a stutter glitchy effect on the way out. Left alone. Just wanna, wanna, wanna. So let's head up here now and we have a couple different tracks. Let's go ahead and solo both of those. And they're kind of boring on their own here. So as far as the drum track grows, it just stays like that the entire, you know, the entire time. It doesn't change at all. Then we have a few different uh, synth patterns uh, that we change to. Now right here, it's kind of, you know, we have a transition there. So I would need to do something to the audio, right? To make it a little more interesting. Well, we've already done that with stutter edit two. And that leads in to uh, a stutter effect up here on the drums as well. And it blends together uh, really well. So same thing here, because we switch to another synth part, you just hear it switch. Kind of boring. So again, we're using stutter edit two, we're adding some repeats. Uh, to our our kick drum there, it sounds much more interesting there for that uh, uh, for that transition. And down here we have some sort of like tape stop effects on both of this uh, both of these different tracks because this just sort of continues. It's a little bit boring, so we're going to add uh, some uh, interest to it. All right, that is Stutter Edit 2. Of course, links will be in the description below if you want to if you want to go check it out. A great tool for obviously adding stutter effects, glitch effects, other kinds of effects real quickly and real easily, but it's also useful for sound design. It's good for creating weird atmospheres. It's good for using on vocals, even spoken vocals. Uh, it's good for creating effects that you might then go use in a video, you know, a glitch effect or something like that. Uh, real quick and easy here in Stutter Edit two. All right, guys, go uh, go check it out.